Why is keto not working for me? A lot of people becoming interested in low carbohydrate diets, right? Um, strategies for losing body fat are more necessary now than ever. Type 2 diabetes, diabetes, the obesity rates in the Western world are astronomical, right? As the obesity rates are climbing, sperm counts and fertility rates are declining, our vitality is declining as a species. And a ketogenic diet is a powerful strategy that a lot of people are using to regain metabolic flexibility, the ability to burn both fat and glucose effectively as fuels in order to regain insulin sensitivity and stable blood glucose so that we can live a healthy, happy human life. And a ketogenic diet is a powerful tool for everything I just mentioned. It's also very good for reducing inflammation, for, mo um, for augmenting brain chemistry, right? Our neurochemistry is intimately affected by the foods we eat. In a ketotic state, in a ketogenic diet, your brain will favor GABA production over glutamate, right? So instead of getting high levels of glutamate, which is very excitatory, we get more GABA which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. And this inhibitory neurotransmitter is soothing and calming. So many reasons why people are implementing a ketogenic diet. Many valid reasons. But there are also many reasons why people are failing at a ketogenic diet. So let's just go over some of the basics of keto and why it might not be working for you. First thing to remember is it takes time to get adapted to the diet. For your whole life, you've been using primarily glucose as fuel, right? Most of us have high levels of insulin resistance. Most of us have very, very unstable blood glucose numbers, and most of us have very poor habits concerning food choice. The beginning stages of keto are the most difficult, and we have to understand that it takes time to adapt. Just like any new habit that you're trying to implement in your life, Keto takes time to adapt to. The more repetitions you put in, the more days you put in, the less you've got to think about it. So when you're starting out a ketogenic diet, get, when you're starting out a ketogenic diet, understand that there is an adaptation period that can take anywhere from a few days to a few weeks to some people even up to like a month or so to feel optimal. When you first pull out the carbohydrate from the diet, the body can become a little bit stressed out. So when you're first starting out keto, don't put yourself in a huge caloric deficit. Right? You're gonna need to increase the fat intake on a ketogenic diet in the beginning especially. There's no magical ketogenic macro ratio of 80% fat's gonna get you fat loss. A lot of the information that you're seeing about a ketogenic diet comes from the 1920s epilepsy diets that they were giving to children who had refractory, untreatable epilepsy where drugs wouldn't work. They had to maintain very high therapeutic levels of ketones in the blood. In those, in those situations, on a medical ketogenic diet, high elevated blood ketones and very stable blood glucose levels are very, very important. Now, when you're doing a keto diet for fat loss, it's different than a ketogenic diet for medical purposes and for epilepsy. We are not concerned with chasing ketones. We aren't concerned with shoving as much fat down the gullet as we possibly can. What we're concerned with is getting a well-rounded, nutrient-dense diet that's got what we need. And by well-rounded, I don't mean it's got a bunch of plants to balance out the naughty meat. No. I mean, you're getting sufficient protein. You're eating nutrient-dense animal foods as your source of energy and fat. And you're keeping those carbs low. So, make sure your food choices are right. Make sure you're getting enough calories to where your body's not stressing out and give your body time to adapt. Get sufficient protein. Protein drops your hunger levels. Sufficient protein is required for not only the maintenance of lean muscle tissue, bone mineral density, right? But many other things in the body require sufficient protein. You need protein to make human growth hormone. So, don't go below 
1.2 grams per kilogram of your goal weight or your lean body mass and protein ever. That's like the bare minimum. Right? I usually recommend about 1.5 up to 2 grams per kilogram of your goal weight or your lean body mass. Depending on the context, right? If you've got 100 or 200 pounds to lose, use your goal weight. If you're trying to maintain your, your lean body mass, use lean body mass, right? If you're trying to maintain your weight, rather, use lean body mass. So, adaptation in the beginning, very, very important. Get enough protein, get sufficient fat, but don't make yourself nauseous, right? In the beginning of a ketogenic diet, not only do we have to generate new mitochondria to process the fat, but we also have to create different enzymes. You know, the pancreas, the liver, the gallbladder have to work in a different way and your body has to become accustomed to not only generating ketones, breaking down fatty acids into ketones in the liver to use those in the brain and in the heart and in other parts of the body and to using fatty acids directly in the muscles, your body also has to digest the fat. So a major problem that a lot of people run into in the beginning is they start trying to eat like 200, 300 grams of fat and their body is not ready for it. So sometimes titrating up the fat or just doing fat to satiety while getting enough protein is a great strategy. Another reason a ketogenic diet might not be working for you is you might have a disrupted circadian rhythm and have shitty meal timing choices. Right now your circadian rhythm is essentially how your biological rhythms in your body are yoked to the environmental signals of light. When the light hits our eye in the morning, it creates physiological response in the body that drives hormones like cortisol to go up. Those stress hormones rise in the morning. For some people, extended fasting, like intermittent fasting, seems like a great strategy, right? But there are cases where it might not be a good idea. And when you're first adapting to keto, I don't recommend doing intermittent fasting. I recommend getting breakfast in. That is because it's stressful to pull those carbohydrates out. Your body's trying to, re to generate more mitochondria and get adapted to this new dietary pathway. And we don't want to stress it out anymore with extended fasting. Also, some people who are not sleeping very well at night might already have aberrant blood glucose numbers in the morning. Because one poor night of sleep, one night of bad sleep, will give us pre-diabetic blood glucose numbers in a healthy, active individual. So in those cases, disrupted sleep patterns can create more stress on the body. Skipping breakfast, prolonging that fast can be stressful. So when you're starting keto, if you've been intermittent fasting, drop it for now and revisit. All right. Another reason when people might be failing at a ketogenic diet is you might be jumping on the scale every day, looking for that weight loss and not seeing it. And there's several things that can be going on there. I've got lots of videos on how to actually properly measure your fat loss. Um, first of all, we have to understand that the scale is not the ultimate authority on your progress. Obviously, if you want the scale to move, if you've got 100 pounds to lose and that scale's not moving, that's a problem. But there are situations where body composition changes dramatically and fat can be lost from the body while muscle gets gained. Right, So you can lose inches off the waist and see no progress on the scale. Something we see all the time with clients. People who come to us thinking that they've stalled, right? Or maybe they have actually hit a stall as far as weight loss goes, but then they don't realize that if they were actually measuring their waist, that they're making significant progress. And why does this happen? Well, first of all, you might have increased your activity levels. You might start have started lifting weights and gained five pounds of muscle and lost five pounds of fat in the last six months, but the, the scale stays the same. But you can look totally different. Something we see a lot in the Keto and Carnivore Collective, which is our community coaching. Right, I actually have been tapering back on the amount of private consultations I do. I still do some private consultations. Check out Ribeye. Ribeye, what are you doing? What are you doing, guy? What are you doing, guy? <laughs> he was spazzing out a second ago. You guys missed it. One of the things we see in our Keto and Carnivore Collective, which gives us a lot of data, Right? We've worked with thousands of clients over the years, which is pretty fun. Right? Getting able to being able to talk to so many people, being able to see so many people who've hit the same wall and find different ways to get around that. A lot of people think that they're not making progress, but they're just looking at the scale. There are non-scale victories that we have to understand. Number one is if your cravings for sugar are gone, that is major. So many of us have had incredible 
addictive behaviors. I mean, just ridiculously um, um, disruptive behaviors in our life concerning food. When we pull out those trigger foods and rearrange our relationship with food, that is huge. All right, so you might not be seeing the physical progress after two weeks or so, but if your sugar cravings are gone and you're not craving Pop-Tarts, bagels, and shit food all the time, that is major progress. So there are psychological progresses that we can be making while the physical progress just isn't showing yet. Because remember, how many years did it take for us to get overweight? How many years of bad habits, of bad eating patterns, of negative relationship with food, of treating ourselves? Poorly, of drugging ourselves with food, right? How many years have we gone using those habits much to our health's dismay? It takes time to replace habits, right? It takes at least 21 days to rewire a new habit in our central nervous system, whether that's a movement pattern or a habit of action or an emotional response to a stimulus. 21 days to completely rewire it and make it a new habit pattern. So remember, there are victories beyond the scale. If you're getting rid of your cravings for sugar, if when you get hungry, it's not entertainment anymore, it's nourishment, that's major. Okay. So non-scale victories, recognizing those very, very important. Another thing is just understanding that you've got to be able to make your own foods. Right? One of the major things that people run into when they're doing a ketogenic diet or changing to a low carbohydrate, paleo style, or primal style diet, or a carnivorous diet, a lot of the issues that people run into is they just don't know how to make the foods. Right? Like when we first came from a plant-based diet and started implementing high fat nutrition, it was totally foreign to us. We were used to doing a vegan diet which left our daughter with massive dental caries and left us it was major nutrient deficiencies and immune deficiencies and some serious health issues. When we started revamping our bodies and our lifestyles to get back our health and fertility and vitality, it was really weird because we didn't know how to use these foods. We weren't used to making steaks. We didn't understand how to do simple things like make broth. All right, so part of our journey was actually making the, uh, the Ketogenic Edge cookbook, my wife's book. Uh, she spent over a year and a half on this book, the, keto, the Ketogenic Edge Cookbook, the training manual for low carbohydrate, ketogenic and paleo cuisine. That's our book that essentially trains, it's there as a training manual for how to make these nutrient dense foods. That is basically the book that we would have wanted when we started keto, when we started on this journey. We, wish we were equipped with this knowledge, so that was the goal with making this book. So there's a tool right there that you can use to reformat your habit and actually master your keto kitchen and become comfortable making keto foods. So that's another thing. Get comfortable making the foods. Don't live off of peanut butter, aspartame, fat bombs. You can't be living off of chocolate quest birthday cake, low carb mug cakes. We've got to learn how to navigate the kitchen. Whole unrefined foods, right? Protein comes from something that had eyes, not from a freaking white powder. The diet shouldn't be based on powders, fake sugar, and fake shit. Okay. Another problem that a lot of people run into on a ketogenic diet is hyper-focusing on their blood ketone levels. Chasing ketones thinking that that is some sort of marker of metabolic health. Consider this. You're on a carbohydrate-based diet, you're burning glucose. Are you going to be measuring your blood glucose all the time, looking for high blood glucose numbers as an indicator that you're effectively using that fuel? No. In fact, it's the opposite. On a glucose-based diet, you want a nice, stable, narrow bandwidth of blood glucose throughout the day. You don't want it super high, super low. Why would we think it's any different on a ketogenic diet? Why do we, for some reason, think that chasing these ketones is going to make us healthier? Right? There's a narrow bandwidth of energy that the body will maintain in the blood, especially when it's adapted. Now, when you first adapt to get adapted to keto, you might see super high ketones. Peeing them out all over the strips, pissing all over your fingers, seeing if it turns purple. Oh, it's purple. I'm in ketosis. Great. When it really doesn't mean anything. Right? We've all got a circadian rhythm of energy production in the body. There's different times when ketones will be lower or higher, will be lower right after a meal. Certain types of exercise, it might be lower or higher after. And we've got a circadian rhythm to energy production. You've got to understand, if you're measuring ketones and chasing ketones, you're probably missing the point. It is interesting to understand 
if you're doing it with the knowledge that different things will affect ketone production, and if you understand that ketones don't equal results. More ketones don't equal more fat loss. In fact, what I found from working with hundreds of clients over the years, actually, like I said earlier, thousands now, just realized, we've been working with so many people and seeing that even when tracking blood ketones, which some clients enjoy doing that, but I don't recommend it for anybody, right? I don't recommend spending 20 bucks a week on ketone strips to see if you're in ketosis. If you want fat loss, measure fat loss. If you want mental clarity, measure that. If you want to gain muscle, if you want to gain strength, measure your progress with that. Don't worry about the ketones so much. What I have found is that when people are losing body fat and they're burning body fat optimally and really, really shedding those pounds, they're not gonna have super high blood ketones like if they're guzzling MCT oil or doing a therapeutic ketogenic diet or doing extended fasting. Optimal fat loss ketones, what I found is it depends on the individual, but it's going to be between like 0.5 and 1.5, and usually doesn't go much higher than that for optimal body fat loss. Now, of course, you can push those up through long term fasting. You can take MCT oil, exogenous ketones, and boost your blood ketones all you want. That doesn't mean you're burning body fat, though. All right, guys, so. You want to keep it simple. The ketogenic diet is relatively straightforward and easy to implement if you get the habits down. Right? You want to focus on nutrient-dense, unrefined foods. You don't want to get, get bogged down in all the ridiculous details. You can't eat this food. You can't eat that food. This is bad. This is good. Refine your diet as you go. Start out by cutting the carbs out. For some people, cutting the bread and the wheat and the corn and the soy, all these junk foods, cutting the sugar out. That can give major results, especially in the beginning. And as we move forward, we might have to understand the, in, the ins and outs of um, how our body responds to certain foods. Some people do better with some plants in their diet. Some people might have very high sensitivity to oxalates or salicylates and lectins and might do better on a more carnivorous style diet. It's not about what works for this guy or that guy or this fake authority on the internet, or this guy trying to fleece you for your money to sell you supplements on the internet, or this guy over here trying to make a name for himself by just repeating information that other people give online. It's about what works for you. It's not about finding some guru to latch onto and worship and make your new god. It's about finding a diet and a lifestyle that you can maintain long term and enjoy. It's about finding a diet that allows you to eat foods that you like and enjoy it. And do that long term. For me, I love being able to eat steak for breakfast. I love being able to have delicious foods like pork belly, right? To have these high fat, nutrient dense keto foods. I love high fat foods. I love steaks. I love eggs. I like butter. I like salty, savory, fatty foods. So a ketogenic diet allows me to eat those and enjoy it and maintain the health and body composition that I want to maintain. And that's why I do it. So find what works for you. Keto might not be working for the reasons we just discussed, or you might just be self-sabotaging. It might be totally working exactly as it needs to. But sometimes we don't allow ourselves to see the progress. Sometimes we get addicted to that struggle. So we gotta check the mind, we gotta check our habits, and we gotta check our expectations. Don't expect instant results. It's about long-term habit formation and enjoying a lifestyle that allows us to be healthy, happy, and full of life. So keep it simple. Get off social media, kill your Facebook account. Get out there in the real world and talk to people and go live your life.